Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. So I uh, thought I would do a little follow-up uh, to the last one of these videos that I did uh, where I showed you my uh, CB360, my 1975 uh, Cafe Classic, as I believe I called it, which, by the way, is sitting right there. And I uh, thought I would update it, actually, with uh, the new newest addition to the uh, MJF motorcycle stable. Uh, a lot of you out there are probably not familiar with these. This is pretty much as brand new of a brand new bike gets. This is uh, new for 2013. Let me back up so you can see the whole thing. Uh, this is the 2013 Honda CB1100. Uh, it's basically the Honda's answer to the, the kind of cafe racer, you know, cafe classic scene. And they've basically resurrected a style of bike that they more or less invented. Uh, for all you older guys out there um, who... Uh, lived through uh, the 70s and the 60s, uh, you remember a acronym called UJM, uh, stands for Universal Japanese Motorcycle, uh, where basically uh, pretty much every Japanese bike that came out of that era, you know, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Honda, Suzuki, etc., uh, pretty much all looked more or less the same, and they were all more or less clones um, of the, the original design that, that Honda put together. And um, the, the cycle mags like Cycle World and uh, Riders and stuff like that, um, just coined the phrase UJM, you know, for Universal Japanese Motorcycle. So uh, this is pretty much the the resurrection of the UJM. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a a new acronym. Uh, so you heard it here first, folks. Uh, since this this is a new UJM, I'm gonna call it the new JM. N U J M. So you heard it here first. Anyone who wants to use it, that's copyrighted. I'm just kidding. So I uh, thought I'd just give you a little juxtaposition here. Um, this one you've seen before. My 75 CB360, still running, running like a champ, still a real joy to ride. You get a lot of waves and uh, a lot of folks asking you about this when you go out on a bike this old, so it's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of like being a rock star or something. <clears throat> and I'll give you a close-up of the uh, CB1100, significantly larger bike, I'm sure you guys can tell. Uh, much larger engine, nearly four times larger than my 360. It's 1140 cc's. Uh, no, uh, no radiator on this one. That thing on the front there, that is actually an oil cooler. This is still an air-cooled engine. Four cylinders, four into one exhaust, just like I like it. Uh, my CB360 is a two into one. Just gives it a kind of a cooler look, in my opinion. Uh, disc brakes, vented discs. Uh, actually, this is the ABS model. Um, it's a little bit more money. It's about a thousand extra dollars, but it's pretty much the only option available on this bike. Um, there are no other colors there's <clears throat> excuse me short of accessories and things there's really nothing else you can do to this bike you either get the standard model or you get the abs model that's that's pretty much it uh the color uh is coined by honda is candy red Let's see if i can catch it in the sunlight so you can see it there we go uh really uh, kind of a a darkish red almost like a wine red um not so much like my 360 again this is 40 year old paint so i'm sure it's it's uh, it's a little bit on the faded side, but um, this is more of just a just a basic red, kind of a fire engine red, and uh, candy red. I think uh, suits the description of this really well. You know, it's that deep dark uh, candy red color, which is cool. Uh, side covers silver. You can see the CB1100 logo there. And uh, again, I'm sure a lot of you older guys, you know, just can see the resemblance of uh, you know the original Honda bikes, and you can see it in this uh, current incarnation of the Honda bike. I mean, this is pretty much Honda's love letter uh, to guys like me who, you know, just fell in love with this era of bikes and have been clamoring for Honda to make another one. A uh, little quick bit of history for you. Um, Honda has actually made this bike overseas, uh, I believe, since either 2008 or 2009 um, in different markets. They've sold it in, I believe, Australia, uh, Japan, I think even parts of Europe. Uh, but for some reason, they just hadn't brought it to the States until this year. Um, I originally heard about this back in, I believe it was like the first week of December, like maybe December 1st or December 2nd, uh, when I was online, you know, just checking Cycle World, you know, looking at all the new bikes and new articles and things like that. And um, there was this big headline that said, uh, CB1100, it's coming. And I almost jumped out of my damn seat. I was so excited uh, because I, I've been hoping, you know, for quite a while that Honda would in their infinite wisdom would see to fit to bring this to the United States um, because you know if I had my pick of any new bike this would have been at the top of my list and uh, I'll be honest with you guys um, I was on the phone with my local Honda dealer within five minutes of seeing that article 
and I basically said I will take the first one. And I went down there with cash and made a deposit, and I actually was successful. I was the very first person to ask about this, so I got the first one uh, that they got in stock. And uh, that was actually Friday. Today's Sunday, for the record. And uh, it came in Friday night, and they set it up for me and had it ready to go on Saturday. So uh, they only got in two of them. They got the ABS model and the standard models, but I was the uh, the first customer of theirs to uh, service. And I've checked with the surrounding dealers in my area, and they don't have them. So uh, this might very well be the first CB1100 in Northern Virginia, which is kind of cool. So, you know, it's it's not serial model like 0001 or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, guys. But, um, you know, it's just, it's just kind of cool to, you know, be the first guy to get a crack at something like this. But... Um, as far as some other features of the bike, um, like I mentioned, it is air-cooled. You know, it's an old-school Transverse 4, uh, new radiator. Um, it is double overhead cam as opposed to the original CB750, which the original one was single overhead cam. They later changed to double overhead cam. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you uh, out there who are familiar with the CB750 see the resemblance here. Um, this is basically just the 2013 version of the CB750, just larger engine. And um, it is fuel-injected. It's not carbureted anymore. But uh, other than that, you know, this is... <laughs> More or less, uh, you know, 30, 40 year old technology just slightly revamped uh, for the modern bike market. Um, I have been out on this, guys. I actually uh, rode it uh, quite a ways uh, yesterday uh, over to my folks' house where I am right now. Uh, FYI, there's my old man's bike. I'll give a quick shot of this for all you Harley friends. It's a Harley Davidson Sportster 1200. Uh, he's had this bike since the mid 90s and really hasn't had any problems with it. He loves it. Uh, but for the record, my dad's kind of a Honda guy at heart. This is his first Harley Davidson. He's owned six Hondas, so <laughs> that, that's a Honda guy in my book. Uh, but anyways, um, you know, like I was saying, this is, uh, uh, you know, I, I rode this, you know, yesterday for, for quite a ways, you know, just basically right out of the dealer uh, to drop it off here. And uh, I was just completely in awe of how easy to ride this motorcycle is. Um, it is significantly heavier um, than my CB360. Not a lot, but um, that's like 380 pounds, and this is 550 pounds. Again, for all you CB750 enthusiasts out there, you'll remember that was the original weight of the bike. But, you know, this has nearly double the engine size, and they still managed to keep the weight down. You know, I, I understand a lot of you sport bike guys are probably rolling your eyes at that. You know, oh, God, 550 pounds, you know. But, I mean, you know. It's, this isn't a sport bike, guys. I mean, even though Honda technically classifies it as one on their website, if you check it out at honda.com, it's in the sport bike section. Uh, to me, it's not. To me, this is a standard or just a UJM. Um, you know, it is sport E in the fact that, you know, it's got a decent sized engine, but um, I, I guess you could call it a sport bike if you're comparing it to the CB750, which was basically the original sport bike, you know, the, the first super bike. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, but you know, to me, this is just a standard, you know, it's, it's kind of in between cruiser and sport bike. So, but anyways, um, I was just kind of amazed at how easy this thing is to ride. Um, it's not super snappy on, on the throttle, you know, to the point where you have to be super cautious when you're letting the clutch out, like you do on a, a high end sport bike. Um, it's got plenty of go, uh, when you lay into the throttle on this thing, man, it takes off. I mean, you've got just tons and tons of torque and horsepower to play with, uh, you know, that moves that weight almost without effort. Um, even when you're in a higher gear and you're at a lower speed, you know, if you're one or two gears above uh, where you should be for a comparable speed, it's got so much torque that it'll move this thing right along with no problem. And it's just so well engineered and well balanced. It's got a very low center of gravity. I know it doesn't look like it, guys, but I mean, when I sit on this thing, it does not feel like 550 pounds when you try and balance it. It just... It just doesn't. I don't know how they do it, but just tricks of modern engineering, I suppose. But um, Honda has really just done an absolutely fantastic job with this bike. Um, I, I really, I am not disappointed at all. This is uh, everything that I hoped it would be. I'll give you a look at the, the instrumentation layout. Let me see if I can get out of the shadow there and you can see the miles. Sorry if that's not showing up. There we go. See that? 39 miles. It had zero on it when I got it. All they did was take it around the block, basically, to make sure it was good to go. But uh, as you can see, you got a little bit of old school, a little bit of new school. You got analog gauges, you know, for uh, tack and for speedo. Then you've got a clock. You've actually got a fuel gauge and your odometer and and a trip meter, of course. But you know, just a little bit of retro, a little bit of modern stuff. Uh, front mounted ignition, no more side stuff. You know, even though I've I've got mine. Um, up in that same spot on my 360 because I relocated it. Uh, controls, 
very similar uh, to the classic Honda lights, horn, turn signal, uh, engine start and stop, start switch. You know, just all the all the normal stuff there. Uh, pretty pretty easy to work with. Very familiar to me. Uh, you got these nice high polished mirrors, which is really cool. Kind of complements the front end there. Gives a little bit a little bit of sparkle. Nice chrome fender, and just kind of an understated engine in my opinion. You know, it's kind of the the black on metal kind of stuff. You can see the big no red cams uh, sitting on top of that thing, and it's just uh, it just kind of flows. You know, it's it's kind of a I guess what I would call understated elegance, where you've got you know just a little bit of pop, but you know just not going uh, crazy on something like a Harley where it's you know blinged out chrome and stuff like that. You know, the real eye to eye attention, you know, eye grabbing stuff. But uh, this is just a little bit of pizzazz, and that's really uh just the way i like it so uh well um i hope you guys have enjoyed this video let me give you one more shot of the the trio there we're getting ready to go out riding here in a minute and uh again i hope you guys have enjoyed this video i uh, appreciate everyone stopping by uh, for all you bike enthusiasts i'm sure you guys are getting a kick out of this one that's that's who this is for and to anyone else stopping by uh, uh thanks for putting up with it for 11 minutes or whatever <laughs> but in all seriousness guys uh thanks so much uh, to all my fellow riders you guys stay safe out there and I'll see you on the road. All right, uh, for those of you who uh, kind of got on me a little bit for not firing up the CB360 last time, I apologize for that. And apparently I forgot to fire up the CB1100 too. So I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll take care of both of those at the same time right now. CB 360's got that kind of old school cafe sound, you know, kind of nice and loud. You know, with the Mac 2 into 1 on there, it's a little bit louder um, than it was uh, compared to the stock pipes, which were uh, 2 into 2, but I like this a little bit better. I like the sound on it. Give you one more rev of it there. Nice and throaty, just the way I like it. All right. And we'll go ahead and fire the CB1100 up. This is a little bit quieter uh, than the 360. Bear with me a second. Isn't that nice when you just press the button and it starts right up? <laughs> Fuel injection is a wonderful thing. It really is. Very uh, predictable starting, but we'll rev it a little bit for you. It zips right along. Uh, it doesn't sound all that different from the CB750, um, which I've been around plenty of. Very similar. You know, it's got that typical uh, transverse Honda four-cylinder sound to it. So, very cool. <laughs>